Good morning, Friday. Good morning, Friday. Good morning, Friday. You need your coffee today. (laughs) I was like, I was so excited (laughs) to say that it's the first Friday in June. You were almost there, but not quite. Not there. Just (laughs) almost there, Nicole. I really appreciate that. (laughs) Thank you, Molly. Uh, That is Molly Myers Labati. I am Nicole Fowles. And our guest in studio with us today is Miss Lori Post. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Lori is a branch associate at the Ostrander Branch Library. Um, but that's not all she does. Not because at all. She is also an extraordinarily talented horseback riding, like woman of Goddess. strength. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. <laughs> she, so the second half of the show, Lori is going to join us talking about the medieval fair that yes. is happening at the Ostrander Branch Library in just over two weeks. And so we can't soon, wait. I am so excited. We can't wait. Um, as always, it is Friday, June 2nd. That means it's a first Friday tonight. First Fridays are the best. That means that I think the, let's see, the DCEMA is doing mm-hmm. a touch a truck this weekend. So many things going on. I love touching trucks. This, you know what? So do about a thousand other children I in know. Delaware. It's so I much know. fun. That's right where I'm at. Yeah. I used to love taking my kids to the touch of trucks and then climb in and think they're driving. It was so cute. Yes. Yes. It is. It is fun. Um, we are back to a regular operating schedule. We are in full force with Summer Reading Club. Mm-hmm. Um, things are just crazy all day, every day. Um, so yeah, let's let's kick it off like we normally do and Love talk it. about books. Let's talk about books. What do we have happening, Molly? What are you reading? Okay, so my book title is a little tricky to say because I try to say appropriate words on the radio. Oh, so I'm going to have you. you fill in the rest of the words. When I say two letters, I'm going to let you figure that one in out. In your brain. In your brain. Got it. Now I have to read it that way. The BA librarians of Timbuktu and the race to save the world's most precious manuscripts. Ooh, okay. I like Um, that. This is by an author named Joshua Hammer. And this is an interesting story. I've been, it's been on my to read shelf probably since it was published years and years and years ago. And it's a story of. A young archivist named Kadra, who started, the book starts like his stories of collecting these texts. He lives in Timbuktu, and he's collecting Molly's text and their history, and the story continues through until Al-Qaeda starts coming in. So this is a nonfiction, and it tells the actual story of how they tried to save the manuscripts of Molly and Timbuktu in that area from Al-Qaeda. Wow. And so... The great thing about this is, you know, I know the history, but I know the history from the perspective of somebody watching all this unfold in the news, not from the story of what it must be like in, you know, Timbuktu, in that area. And the story just keeps getting more and more interesting. First, the collecting of the materials. Like, people didn't think they were worth anything and he'd come in and be like, no, that's extremely valuable and let me pay you a fair price for it. Mm. And he started collecting all of these books, just expecting to archive them, get them in safe containers so they didn't degrade. And then the next thing he knows, he is going Ocean Eleven style to try to save every one of these manuscripts. That's 350,000 manuscripts that he, you know, traveled with his other librarians and compatriots to save. They got them on trucks, on buses, um, had to lie, had to bribe, had to get support. I mean, to get the library built, he kept going back to the Rockefeller Foundation, I think it was, Mm -hmm. um, like two or three times because they'd build it. And it wasn't built quite right. That's in a floodplain. We didn't think it was a floodplain. And like... He protected these. And you think if you were traveling those books on train, on, you know, car, on boat, they would have some loss. They saved all 350,000 manuscripts, which blows my mind. Sneaking them through, you know, their life in peril through the whole thing. Around them, there are things happening like people losing their hands for stealing or being tortured, you know. Mm -hmm. And here they are risking their lives to save their own history. Mm. So this is the, again, fill in your your own words, Mm -hmm. the BA librarians of Timbuktu and their race to save the world's most precious manuscripts. Joshua Hammer, you know, went to Timbuktu to collect these stories. It's told extremely well. And it really takes you down an adventure that really happened. I love a good historical fiction that just pulls everything in so that's my most recent read and i will admit i have 15 minutes left 
Oh, that's so all right. So there You're could so be close. some twist at the end. Maybe they will lose one, but <laughs> oh, right now it's goodness. looking really great. I hope not. That would that would be, that would be really terrible. Writing it was a if long, that happened in the last a longer book for me yeah. here. So, <laughs> well, that sounds really fascinating. Um, all right, T- tell me the author's name. Joshua Ham- Joshua Hammer. Hammer, so cool. Yes. Awesome, Lori. What have you been reading lately? I have been knee deep. I'm halfway through the series uh, by Craig Johnson, the Longmire series. Love the Longmire series. It's really good. I just finished Any Other Name, Mm -hmm. and I have the next book on hold through our library system. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What uh, what happens in this? I actually don't know anything about the Longmire (gasps) series. Oh, they're so good. School me, hit me. I know. (laughs) Well, it the whole premise is he's a sheriff in Wyoming Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. Absaroka County. Yes. And he, it's modern day. I, I haven't read C.J. Box, but I have the feeling it's the same kind of thing. He ends up solving cases. He's really good at it. He's a tall, big man, so he is able to do a lot of things physically, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. well as he's very smart. And so he's like the perfect protagonist if you like westerns, and I do. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun! Awesome. And his it's the relationships, the way the characters are drawn in the Craig Johnson books. I mean, mm-hmm. Longmire, I was just, I was in it. Every mm-hmm. character I cared about or I was angry about or, like, I felt those books. Yes, absolutely. She may have found a series that I absolutely loved. I believe I listened <laughs> yeah, to all yeah. of them, so you can get them on audio as and well. The reader, the reader is very, yes. very good. I love a good reader. I love, mm-hmm. yeah, when you find a good audio book with a good, good reader. That mm-hmm. those are good. Those are good recommendations. So you finished any other name by Craig Johnson, but it's part of the Longmire series. It is mm-hmm. wonderful. Well, I have a fun novel for us today. Um, it is based on some true events, inspired by some true events, and it is another one that one of our book clubs is reading this summer. In fact, it is a Liberty Branch Library book club pick for this summer um, coming up in the month of June. So it is called West with Giraffes, and it's by Linda Rutledge. Uh, so basically, this is the story of um, Woodrow Wilson Nickel. He mm-hmm. is age 105 and he feels his life ebbing away I mean I feel like he's done a pretty good job if he's made it to age 105 Uh, but when he learns that giraffes are going extinct he finds himself recalling an unforgettable experience that he can't take to his grave so this is a little bit of one of those setups where you um, you know you kind of get to the end of somebody's story and then you get the flashback and then you get the rest of the story so um, we go to 1938 and the Great Depression is still lingering. Hitler is threatening Europe. And, you know, world worry, world weary Americans are longing for wonder. And they find it in two giraffes who have miraculously survived a hurricane. Wow. While they have been crossing the Atlantic. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, you, you get a lot of questions answered uh-huh. here. What were these giraffes doing crossing the Atlantic? I mean, it's not like they just walked onto the boat. Like, hey, two I mean, giraffes walk onto a boat. <laughs> I mean, it could have happened. <laughs> right. I mean, you exactly. never know. But the it's a 12-day road trip that they get into in a custom truck to deliver, uh, and here's where how they got here, <laughs> to deliver Southern California's first giraffes to the San Diego Zoo. Oh, that is so cool. So it's, you know, inspired by these true events. And it's have the the story does, you know, weave the real life Mm -hmm. figures with the fictional ones to continue telling the story. Um, It includes the world's first female zoo director. Uh, It includes a crusty old man with a past, (laughs) um, a young female photographer with a secret and assorted reprobates as spotty as the giraffes. (laughs) Okay, I have an old, really old view master from the San Diego Zoo. I am going to go back and see if there's any like mention or of giraffes. The thing the thing that's funny is, is like, imagine that you are sitting in whatever town, you know, that these giraffes had to drive through in 1938. And you literally see, like, you know, when you're driving on the highway, isn't it fascinating enough whenever you see, you know, a truck with a trailer that's pulling cows or pulling horses? I saw chickens the other day. (laughs) Chickens and their little feathers were sticking out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to go love those chickens. It's like it's your lucky day if it's one of those um, trucks that has like the hole so that their snout can come through and you see them kind of sniff in the air or something like that. When you're pulling your horse trailers, can people see your horses? Yes. 
Mike Ward sticks her nose out, and she has to look at everybody. You know that I am going to stalk you now (laughs) so so that I can be looked at by your horse. You know, I have to put sunblock on her nose because it's pink, and she sticks it out out of the trailer. (laughs) This is turning into the best show ever. (laughs) Well, see, now see, like, take that wonder of that, you know, that your own highway experiences, and now it's a giraffe, you know, Mm -hmm. and not one, but two. Yes. yes. So it's a very cool story. It's called West with Giraffes. This is going to be a really, really fun one. You still have plenty of time to uh, reserve your copy and um, head over to the Liberty Branch Library for either the virtual discussion of this or the in-person discussion of this. So by Linda Rutledge. So at that, we are going to take a break. We're going to come back for the second half of the show and talk a little bit about, or a lot about, the medieval fair that is happening at the Ostrander Branch Library. Or otherwise called Ye Old Medieval Ye Fair. Ye Olden Medieval Fair. Tra-dum, <laughs> tra-la-la-la. <laughs> Stay tuned. Welcome back. You are listening to Off the Shelf. We're so happy to be with you on this beautiful first Friday of June. I love First Fridays in June because yes. you know what it means. It means outside is warm. Yeah. Well, I'm not cold anymore. I am done with the cold. It is yes. It's enough. It's enough. Enough is enough. I am ready to swim, and it's got to be warm because I don't like the water cold either. (laughs) And you know what else I love about summer? What? Medieval fair. Medieval fair? (laughs) It's the best. The olden medieval fair. So we are joined today in the studio by Laurie Post. She is a branch associate at the Ostrander Branch Library. And you really did help birth the origins of the medieval fair at the Ostrander Branch. Tell us, Mm -hmm. what in the world is a medieval fair? Well, first I have to mention that um, when this whole idea was birthed, I thought my branch manager was going to shut me down. (laughs) (laughs) Because the original medieval fair in Southern California started as a school project. Oh, okay. So I came at her with that, and I thought, what do you think? And she said, okay. And the rest, as they say, is history. And I it think- is history. Oh, I got that. Live in action. <laughs> <laughs> but I think one of the reasons why you feel particularly drawn to this is because of your involvement with something called the Knights of the Rose. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. They have been with us, or I should say we, because I am yes. involved in it. Yes. Uh, we have been involved since the first uh, Ostrander Medieval Fair. Mm-hmm. And it's an all-female troop. Of jousters, they can do everything from the full armor, knock each other off the horse jousting. Oh, I love that. Uh, they can do what's called light armor jousting, which is known in jousting circles sometimes as shield tag, where you're mm-hmm. still on the horse, you still have the lance, but your aim is to hit the shield and break the lance if you can, but not knock the other person off. Oh, that's <laughs> I what I do. Okay. Because I don't bounce anymore. <laughs> that still sounds scary to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blast. It is so fun. Oh, my gosh. And then we do the skill at arms, which is what we're going to be doing at the medieval fair. Mm-hmm. And those involve the training games that a knight would have to go through before they could achieve knighthood. That makes sense. And so we've seen some of these at past medieval fairs. Mm-hmm. There are things like chopping an apple off of a squire's head. <gasps> I did that and... once. I was the squire. She was. <laughs> I was a brand new deputy director, hardly been here, and, and said, you chopped an apple off my here. head with a sword. Yeah, I did. stand here while I charge at you with a horse. And, and I, I said, and yes. A sword. <laughs> and I didn't miss. You didn't miss. Thank I you. still have a job. I'm so lucky. <laughs> I've seen... yeah, HR would not approve. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> know what they would think if my head had rolled <laughs> <laughs> we've seen cabbage chopped off of heads yes. as well we've seen uh what is it where you try and spear the ring yes ring joust oh a ring jousting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and then there was something that we were lucky enough to see i know the year that we had a virtual medieval mm-hmm. fair where there was a target and it spun we will have that this year it's called the quintain okay the quintain. back in the old days if you did it wrong the counterbalance on the quintain part that spins mm-hmm. uh-huh. would whack you in the head if you didn't go fast enough. We don't have it set up like oh. that. <laughs> well, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> because you need the punishment. Well, yes, it's punishment. actually because we've been doing it long enough where we wouldn't get hit in the head. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, so exactly. it all be disappointed. Yes, yeah, would. that's fair. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so much fun. So this will be happening during this year's medieval fair. There will be horses there, and the Knights of the Rose will do performances, um, uh, performances, demonstrations. They will they will do the games. Yes. At uh, twelve and but, two. But wait, wait, wait. Can wait. I dress up? Can yes. I be medieval myself? Please. 
I will. I That's will. Wonderful. I absolutely will. Yes. Oh, and I failed to mention the date. This is Saturday, yes. June 17th this yes. year. Yes. Saturday, June 17th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Ostrander Branch mm-hmm. Library. If you haven't been there before, um, just look it up on Google. It's in the heart of downtown Ostrander. We've got a big open field for you to park your cars in. Wonderfully big open field. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. going to be really, really amazing. So, yeah, come in costume. Come in costume. What else can people see when they're at the fair? Uh, we're having the quint- quintessence strings yes uh, they'll be performing and we are having a marketplace that is full of people that are demonstrating carding wool and leather working we have a blacksmith who also will be riding with the roses oh, really because he at one time was one of the best if not Number two in the country as oh. far as being a joust. Wow. So yes, the all female troop said, We guess you can join. I guess right. this you, time. Yeah. <laughs> you can die. Yes. <laughs> so, but he's wonderful. Um, but he's also the blacksmith. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. I wonder how many people, if you've never seen any of this jousting, you know, until I went to our medieval fair, I really didn't realize how alive this culture still is. Oh, yeah. And it is, it is neat. It is from the original. I mean, you're getting to see a lot of what it was like Mm -hmm. you know we just had uh kelly here last week and she was talking about um one of the coupons that we have for the six Mm -hmm. hour prize of um the summer reading club is the ohio renaissance fair i think it's either a a free entry or or a discounted entry that you'll get in that coupon um so but that's i mean almost all the way down near cincinnati if you're going to go to the ohio renaissance festival um, so this is a taste in your backyard. It's completely free to come. Mm-hmm. Um, we will have some opportunities if you wanted to spend money with some food trucks that yes. are coming yes. for that yes. day. Who, tell us a little bit about who's coming to feed us. Ye old food trucks. Yes. <laughs> the portage cars. <laughs> Dan's Deli mm-hmm. and Chow Cafe will have gelato. Oh, yeah. Oh, we gelato. We could we could make it medieval gelato mm. in some way, right? And we Ye also, old gelato. Ye old gelato. O-L-D-E gelato. <laughs> and we also have... Um, Midway Market across the highway, mm-hmm. and they have sandwiches and pizza yes. and hot lunches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, so one of the cool things that people will also see, you, you mentioned the marketplace, and mm-hmm. that it, it is a bustling affair. It is, uh, but there will be demonstrations. It's a whole family who are providing yes. these demonstrations. It is. How did we find them? What are they going to show us? Carla found them, and I don't know how. <laughs> Carla was our previous branch manager. Uh, because she was magical? Yeah. She well, was she, just magical. Absolutely. I also failed to mention we will have a hair braider. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And a caricature artist. Mm-hmm. Oh, and... We have the best caricature. I've got yes. a couple from years past that Lloyd and I keep in our living room mm-hmm. as ye old couple. Ye old couple. Ye old that couple. Is, that is Jeffrey Stemmen, of whom they are speaking, and mm-hmm. he does he does a really wonderful he job. Does. He's been out mm-hmm. many, many years in a row. Yeah, and just to see some of these things in action. Yes. I almost forgot Percy the Unicorn's going to be Yes. There. Percy is going to make a magical pop-up magical. appearance. We never yes. know when we'll see Percy, but he does like, he has a special place in his heart for this uh, event. I'm mm-hmm. going to point out the fun is going to start in the parking lot when ye old Quanians are helping us yes. get our cars parked. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we have many thanks to give to the Quanians. Yes who are giving their time as our parking attendants. They are a wonderful group we have here in Delaware, always happy to help. Yes. So, you know, disclosure, I yes. may be one of them. <laughs> things, things do kick off right at 11 a.m. Um, there is a performance stage mm-hmm. that will have some hay bales um, that you can come and sit at. And we're going to uh, be greeted by the warm, welcoming tones of George Morrison's bagpipes. Always so calming so and calming. quiet. Calming. I mean, you may have to lean in. Yeah. I'm saying sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so George Morrison will kick things off right at 11 a.m. with um, a traditional Scottish um, yes. welcome to the medieval fair. Which my husband requires me to refer to as the music of his people. <laughs> We have uh, Michael Allen and Bonnie Shiplett, who are going Mm -hmm. to be doing a duet of uh, violin and guitar, which Mm -hmm. will be very beautiful. You mentioned the quintessent strings of Marion, who will also be coming. Um, People can find all of this information on our website, DelawareLibrary.org slash event. You can go over to Saturday, June 17th and click on it. You can download the map. We will have more maps available for you at that day. Um, But two of the things that we haven't talked about that are so exciting is we kind of change up some station themes every year. Last Mm -hmm. year, we had mermaids and pirates. Uh, This year, what do we have, Lori? 
Vikings. Vikings. <gasps> Vikings. Okay, now I'm obsessed with Vikings. What I've... is happening with our Vikings? Vikings. Oh, we're having um, face painting. You can get your face painted to be like a Viking. Yes. Mm-hmm. And oh, I'm going to have that happen <laughs> in my medieval dress. Right, right, right. And um, there'll be some crafts and some um, fun things for the kids. And then not associated with the Vikings, but I just have to mention it because it's one of my favorite things. I like your favorite things. It's a trebuchet. Oh, yes. <gasps> Thank you. Tell us I more about forgot the about the And this year sounds like we're really ready for the trebuchet. Yes. And it launches tennis balls. <laughs> Of course yes. it does. So, like a trebuchet is a, is a catapult, but it's a, a catapult, but it's a different type of arm. It's it's like a flinging arm. It's that, more graceful. Yeah. <laughs> it flings away from rest of the fair, though, right? Away yeah. from rest of the fair. It's just a yes. big open field. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it is. It's a big open field. Because <laughs> one time we hit a car, but nothing bad happened the first year. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. The trebuchet mm-hmm. is, um, so this is all outside the Ostrander Branch Library, mm-hmm. which if you've ever been to the Ostrander Branch, you're like, how are they fitting all this in? Well, it's all outside. Yes. So we're, we're going to do a, a non-rain dance for a beautiful day. Yes, please. And yes. <laughs> we are going to have on the kind of, what is that, the east side of the building, um, the sheriff of the sheriff siege works is mm-hmm. the sheriff of Nottingham. We're going to do the trebuchet um, into the Nottingham Castle. Um, there is another station in Sherwood Forest where yes. you can reenact the meeting between Robin Hood and Little John on the bridge. Oh, there might be an opportunity to duel on the bridge. Oh, <laughs> it was a little less. I'm picking my my dueling aww. partner in my head right now. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Maybe Percy. Me? Well, oh, Percy oh. and I. I mean. <laughs> We I'm going to win this game. We never know. Uh, we also have another fun um, new table this year, which is the Canterbury Tales. And so at the at the Canterbury Tales table, which takes you back, you know. Renas- takes me back to my English class in <laughs> high school, which was amazing. Medieval and Renaissance <laughs> can be a, a, a large span of time. Yes. You know, Vikings are like 11th century. Canterbury Tales are 13th century. It's all medieval mm-hmm. and Renaissance. It's just, you know, whatever era you want to focus on. Um, but in this one, you're going to write your own tale, and you're going to do that by exploring the different stations throughout the library. I love that. It's going to be a good time. Anything else that you want to highlight or, you know, give people a little a little behind-the-scenes secret about this year's Medieval Fair? Well, I do know that um, Justine, a branch mm-hmm. associate, is working on some incredible branch decorations. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're always amazing. Yes, they look wonderful. And... We are just really excited. I mean, it's just right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, And the roses are excited. We've been putting in practices. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have our game on for this for our, yeah. for our performances. Mm-hmm. And of course, and, yeah. throughout all of it, the branch is open as yes. an operational oh, yes. library yes. branch during the day. So when yes. you go inside to turn in your Canterbury Tale scavenger hunt and to cool down a little bit, you'll see Justine's yes. beautiful work. Yes. You'll see, mm-hmm. you'll just, you'll come to the library and you'll see all the wonderful work that's gone into this event. It's it's a, a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful time. And mm-hmm. it's free. It's totally it's free. It's free. It's so free. It's totally free. All right. Well, thank you, Lori. We are going to close out the show with some of the events happening at all of the library branches this week. And unlike last week, I'm going to make sure I am following you and don't need to know what page I'm on. All right. Well, on Tuesday, (laughs) June 6th, we have at the Orange Branch Library at 5.30 p.m., Magic Nate is coming. (gasps) Magic Nate. Magic Nate has hung around Delaware for many of his performances. This is one of the first times that he's going a little bit south in the county for us. I mean, Yes, because he's been known all over central Ohio. And Mm -hmm. if you haven't seen Magic Nate, you need to pop in. He has got a show and a half for you. That's right. And then last week we teased about some of the get-togethers that we're doing with the um, friends at the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Delaware State Park. What's happening on Friday, June 9th, Molly? We've got hiking, cricking, and smoking. S'mores. I said it right. I I go back to my old days as a camp counselor (laughs) where I put on my grubbiest tennis shoes and that water went splashing and I found things. (laughs) (laughs) That is going to be 2.30 at Delaware State Park. Don't come to the library. Come to Delaware State Park. Bring your closed-toed shoes. um, Bring your sunscreen. Bring your bug spray. And bring, bring maybe bring some hand sanitizer. And you, you know what? <laughs> if you've never, I was surprised. I did a s'mores program in my previous library. Do you know there are people who've never made s'mores before? If you yeah. have a neighbor or a friend who's never had s'mores, 
you read about it in books, you see it on American television, you see it all the time. Go next door. Make sure they know this is coming up. This Mm -hmm. is a cool experience. This is, to me, this is my childhood squished Mm -hmm. all into a little program going on. So I think it's fun. And it is so much fun. It's going to be put together well because it's done by our friends at the Delaware State Park and the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. So come ready to play. Come ready to play. All right. Until then, we are going to take a break. We're going to go enjoy. Um, A beautiful summer weekend. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you, Lori, for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. Join us at the Medieval Fair and see her on June 17th. Thank you, Molly. I'm always happy to be here. Thank you, Nicole. Gage, it's always a pleasure. Hey. 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 (laughs) And uh, until next week, we will see you in the stacks.